The NCAA tournament is in full swing, and we have another Locked On Bracket breakdown as the number fourth seed Indiana Hoosiers knock off the 13th seeded Kent State 71 to 60 on Friday night. I'm Isaac Shade, and we are joined now by the host of Locked On Hoosiers, Mr. Jacob Rood. And Jacob Rood. Just when I think I've seen everything I can see from Trace Jackson Davis, he comes out and drops 24 points on 10 of 17 shooting, 11 rebounds, 5 assists, 5 blocks, and a steal. Is there anything this man cannot do? He's unbelievable, man. Uh, It's the first time the stat line of 20 points, 5 assists, 5 blocks, just that part has been achieved in a tournament game. So not even accounting the 11 rebounds. He really took this one over in the second half. IU had done a pretty good job and really I think controlled the game for a lot of it but Trace Jackson Davis just kind of left no doubt in that that's kind of where I'd fallen coming into this game that IU had one of the best players in the country and Kent State didn't and that's where a lot of my confidence came from but even then (laughs) he he never ceases to amaze me as you kind of said he is unbelievable he wasn't ready for his season or his career to end on uh, Friday, Saturday morning, I guess, by the time the final buzzer sounded. And he uh, he made sure it wasn't going to in that second half. We always wonder how freshmen are going to perform when they get into the NCAA tournament. And, and that's true even with superstars like Jalen hood Shafino. Frankly, I, I think that Mike Woodson's team needs more out of him than his 4 of 11, 0 of 2 from 3, and zero free throws. What did you see from Jalen Huchifino in this game, and what do you think he can do moving forward? Yeah, he kind of took a backseat role. I, I don't think he tried to force things, which at times he's had some problems with. Uh, there's been times where he's had some really gaudy, bad shooting nights. And so I, I think he was kind of content letting trace letting other guys uh really have their way on the night and he was kind of locked in defensively but you're right he if i use going to make a deep run they're going to need him to be better than 4 of 11 shooting um this was his first game maybe get some of those jitters out some of those uh the lights are pretty bright he hasn't really shied from that at all this year but just kind of get used to it and i wouldn't be surprised if he steps up in a big way on sunday against miami because He's had those big performances, but this has also kind of been who he's been this year. He's been a little streaky, so uh, he might follow a a night like this with a big game against Miami on Sunday. We'll see, but he certainly has to be more of a factor if Indiana is going to make a deep run. But thankfully, on this night, he didn't have to be much of a factor because it was the Trace and Race show. As Race Thompson, for me, frankly, aside from Trace Jackson Davis, is the story of the game. 20 points, 9 rebounds, and these shooting numbers are astounding to me. A very extremely efficient 8 of 11 from the field and 2 of 3 from deep. When Race Thompson's doing what he's doing, Trace Jackson Davis doing what he's doing. And if you can add in a better line for Jalen hood Shafino, can this three-hooded monster take Indiana farther than maybe anyone thought? Yeah, if race is going to play like this, then man, that's always kind of been the question with this team is you typically are going to get a pretty strong baseline performance from Trace and Jalen. It's who else is going to be there for them. This was a career night <laughs> for Race Thompson. He said he had a quote earlier in the week that He was going to leave it all on the floor, leave it all on the line because he wasn't ready for his career to be over. A lot of guys kind of say that, but I think race really did that on Friday because he was flying out of the gate. He had 10 points in the opening, about six minutes, uh, knocked down a three, had a bunch of finishes at the rim. So it, I use going to have a size advantage. They did against Kent state. Uh, They'll have it against Miami. They're going to need race Thompson to, continue playing like this but if i you just get somebody else that can kind of consistently be that third guy and like you said get jalen hood shafino to perform that's been the formula for them to to come away with some big wins so uh hopefully this is kind of the start of a, a big tournament run for race because he was earnestly that's the best game of his career and what a night to have it what a night indeed Now, Jacob, it was not just about the offense for Indiana on Friday night. They hold Kent State to 31.9% shooting from the field. How did the defense of the Hoosiers hold Kent State to such a low number? Yeah, when IU's been at their best this year, it's been because their defense has 
just been locking guys up. It's not a defense that necessarily creates a lot of turnovers. Kent State only had nine. It's just one that's really disciplined, stays at home, and forces teams into bad shots or tough shots. And that's really what they did against Kent State is – um, they're a team that has a lot of dribble drive, and the Hoosiers didn't lose their guy, didn't just kind of defer to Trace being there at the rim, um, helped and recovered, and forced Kent State into some ugly shots. It helps when Trace has five blocks, and he was uh, – Kent State was getting to the rim and just very aware that Trace was around there and rushing shots or over-penetrating, things like that. So um, – it all ended up – I mean, there was some luck involved with that. Kent State missed a lot of layups on the night as well. So there was a little bit of luck involved with that. But overall, I think that's kind of the the thing that carried IU throughout the night. Their their offense will come and go throughout games, and they're, you can almost guarantee at this point they're going to have a five, six-minute stretch where it's going to – real. it's just going to go away, their offense. But if their defense is like this, it's going to carry them through those stretches. Now, Jacob, I know you haven't had much time to look ahead yet, but give me your early impressions on the matchup with Miami. Yeah, I have a, a bunch of different tabs open right now, starting to look ahead to Miami. <laughs> Seems they're a small team, and yeah. that's something that the Hoosiers are going to take advantage of with Trace and Race, as we were talking about. Kent State was a small team, and Indiana took advantage of that. Um, the Hoosiers are going to have that size advantage. There aren't many guys that are that can hang with Trace Jackson Davis just in general, and, and especially when you're going to have a size advantage like that. So Indiana's not a team that really takes a lot of three-pointers. That's not really how they're going to to do things. So getting to the rim not and getting the ball to trace and race and letting those guys take advantage of mismatches and things like that, uh, I think is going to be the, the game plan for the Hoosiers on Sunday. Certainly will be a fun matchup inside the paint between Trace Jackson Davis and Norchad Omir. Cannot wait to watch that one. For more on Indiana, make sure you subscribe to Locked on Hoosiers. And for a full view of the bracket and all the college basketball action going on right now, subscribe to Locked on College Basketball, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.